I analyzed the science behind how powerful Thor's hammer Mjolnir really is, so we know exactly what possibly the most powerful weapon in the entire MCU is truly capable of. In yet another video that taps into my scientist background and love of all things flashy, Thor's hammer Mjolnir, with Mjolnir being translated to mean the grinder, named so because the hammer is so powerful that it can literally grind down anything that stands before it, literally smacking large buildings into dust, dent if not break adamantium, and rip a new hole in anything that stands in its way, be it all of Marvel, entire planets, and even the Big Bang. This is because Thor's hammer is made from the first metal ore to ever exist. That comes straight from the first moon to ever exist in the universe. That was created from the battle between two elder gods at the end of the previous universe called Uru. Uru is reportedly unique to the Asgardian dimension, specifically the dwarven homeland of Nidavellir, and either resembling stone or sometimes gold, is one of, if not the most powerful naturally occurring substance in the universe. Uru is a non-sparking metal, extremely durable, and highly immalleable metal, often requiring insane methods to forge any of it, like an absurdly enchanted forge and the power of a star. Forming weapons like Odin's spear Gungnir, scoops that allow trolls to dig tunnels to other dimensions, Stormbreaker, and Mjolnir. But Mjolnir is much more than just a metal, as it has a living god forged inside of it. In Old Norse mythology, the creation of Mjolnir came about from Loki placing a bet with the Dwarven brothers, Brock and Sindri, that they would never be able to craft anything that outshined the creations of their brethren, to which they created the replicating ring Dropnir, the golden boar Gulenbursti, and the master hammer Mjolnir, whose handle was too short after Loki stung Brock in the eye. In Marvel, however, the hammer being made of Uru is mainly capable of holding any form of magical enchantment placed upon it no matter how powerful, which the metal also soaks in, making it even more durable. As the story of Mjolnir's creation begins with Odin stepping in to stop a rock troll invasion from taking over the dwarven home, in which the dwarven king Itri gave Odin a nugget of raw Uru to signify the bond between their two realms. Eventually, Asgard came under attack by an elder god in the shape of a cosmic thunderstorm that's literally the size of a galaxy that had ravaged the universe since the beginning of time, snuffing out stars like candles and making black holes tremble, growing with each eon that passed and only destroying those that it believed truly deserved it. For four days, the All-Father Odin battled against the god Tempest, sending meteors crashing down to ancient Midgard, and through dark and primal magic, Odin was able to seal the storm inside of the Uru Nugget. Odin subsequently took the piece of Uru back to the dwarves, so they could forge it into a weapon through which Odin could wield the storm's power. And after 17 weeks of forging, the piece of Uru was transformed into a hammer, which Odin dubbed Mjolnir. But there was one problem. The storm still raged inside of the mallet, as did the god's sentience, which may explain why Mjolnir seems to have a mind of its own sometimes. With Odin barely being able to control Tempest's powers, as he tried to wield the hammer, he had no choice but to place one last enchantment on the hammer, preventing anyone without an unwavering moral sense and fortitude from ever lifting it, or else the hammer would likely destroy them. Soon, Odin, upon ascending to the Asgardian throne, left the 42-pound hammer to sit in Asgard's weapons hall for ages to come, with the god Tempest slowly fading away within it, leaving its power behind, with Odin eventually giving the hammer to his son. So henceforth, the story of Mjolnir and its downright tremendous to bizarre feats is tied to the story of Thor. And with this hammer, Thor has been able to complete feats like smack Gore the God Butcher so hard that he sent shockwaves flying that shattered or fractured the planets around him, which seeing how the planets around them had their surfaces broken to the point of at least seeing their molten or mantle layers, but weren't completely blown apart. And if we compare them to the size of or the average thickness of the Earth's crust, this would mean that Thor's swings and his fight against Gore would at minimum be hitting the planets across space with a force around at the very least 5,640 mega pascals over an extremely large area to break their crust. Or rather, Thor would be hitting with a weight equal to 560 billion tons. So something like a real 
really powerful meteor strike. Although Thor has done worse, like the time that an absolutely colossal storm was devastating the Earth, Marvel's heroes stood inside and watched as Thor one-shotted a rock the size of Chicago, or otherwise 231 square miles that was hurling straight at them, which would roughly take a force far bigger than the largest nuclear warhead to ever be tested, being the Tsar Bomba, that has the destructive power of 50 megatons, or 1,500 times more powerful than the bombs dropped on Japan. That is able to literally vaporize everything within 3 miles of its blast radius, but seeing how the Tsar Bomba was only able to completely destroy a village 34 miles away from where it went off, while only damaging buildings further away than that, and seeing how Thor had to completely break apart the entire 231 mile rock, we could estimate that Thor had to hit with a force around 340 megatons to blast this thing apart. Or there's the time that Thor simply slammed Mjolnir into the ground and destroyed all of Manhattan Island, an area of close to 23 square miles, angering most of Earth's heroes who attempted to fight a somewhat losing battle against him altogether. But perhaps even more impressive is when Thor hit Jormungandr so hard that he vaporized the immediate buildings around him, turning them into dust, which would take tens to possibly hundreds of billions of joules of energy, as the energy needed to vaporize just five 20-foot sill beams in a skyscraper's foundation is around 8 billion joules, meaning that Thor would have to be hitting with the energy equal to 100 large lightning strikes at once. So, not too surprisingly, Thor has even been able to shatter force fields that would take the power of a nuclear warhead to break, or 80 trillion joules of energy, and has been able to dent and even break some forms of adamantium, carved himself a new hammer out of Uru metal using his darn finger, and thanks to Mjolnir, Thor is stated to have the capability to hit with enough force to completely destroy small planets, if not the entire Earth with a single swing. Keeping in mind that in order to fully destroy a planet, and not just wipe out the life present on its surface, this would require the planet to be hit with a force so powerful as to overcome the gravitational energy binding the planet together. As planets like Earth are more like big rocky onions, with the gravity of the lower layer keeping the one above it glued down. So in order to blow up the planet, you would need to hit it so hard as to send every layer and chunk of rock flying into space so fast that they are able to completely escape each other's gravitational pull and form back together. This unbinding power would require a force roughly of 2.24 times 10 to the 32nd power of joules, or one of the most ridiculous sounding numbers you've ever heard, being 224 non-nillion joules, or the power that is over 20 trillion times the size of the world's entire nuclear arsenal put together. And as far as big numbers go, with all the characters we've covered on this channel, Thor with the super-powered Mjolnir in hand is just warming up to what this hammer and its ultimate attack are truly capable of doing. Did you know that Mjolnir actually grants onto its wielder an array of somewhere around 23 different powers, including the ability to manipulate all forms of weather, creating tidal waves, earthquakes, blizzards, instantly making any of these things appear on a planet-wide scale, and due to it being magic, the wielder can create these storms even where they would be naturally impossible. Mjolnir also grants its host flight if they can hold on to it, allows the wielder to both absorb energy and shoot energy blasts, produce a blast known as anti-force that can possibly vaporize entire planets, allow the user to sense all types of energy, allowing Thor to easily track down anyone anywhere, instantly create wormholes in space, allowing Thor to basically teleport, manipulate and full on transmute matter as Thor once turned the absorbing man into pure helium because he can, allows the wielder to use dark magic, absorb and manipulate the entire electromagnetic spectrum, thus letting them manipulate the energy of anyone or anything, literally turn themselves invisible, and Thor can make himself intangible, letting him phase through anything, as well as Thor can also stop others like Vision from phasing. The hammer also allows the wielder to recall past events, manipulate souls, absorb the very life force of a being, detect illusions, send psychic messages between realms, and grants them the ability known as 
all speak, allowing Mjolnir's wielder to communicate in any language. Beyond that, Mjolnir also has a symbiotic relationship with its wielder, as the hammer amplifies the natural powers of its host, doubling the power and strength that Thor has, while at the same time the hammer itself is made stronger and more durable, depending on the strengths and abilities of the one wielding it. This relationship has allowed Thor, wielding Mjolnir, to use the hammer's most powerful ability known only as the God Blast, where for a moment Mjolnir full-on magically merges with its host and the host's life force, absorbing it and then unleashing it as a powerful God-killing blast which is able to full-on rip the very fabric of the universe, allowing Thor to banish gods like Ymir and Surtur to another dimension, fry Thanos, and completely stagger beings like Galactus into yesterday, as he also shatters the heads of Celestials by flailing the hammer around angrily. With Mjolnir in hand, Thor can actually throw it and move at the speed of light, or otherwise 671 million miles per hour, clotheslining poor beings like the Silver Surfer. In fact, Mjolnir is so magically powerful as a boomerang that it can be recalled even after falling into a black hole, or happily tunnel through planets to return to its wielder, even if that means creating a portal that allows it to travel across entire dimensions on its own. The hammer has been able to absorb the very essence of different gods' immortality and gives its wielder the power to blast stars back to life, a feat that is just astronomical, and finding the size of a star like our sun and converting its mass into energy would mean that if Thor was to create a star like our own, he would be shooting out just below 200 quadror decillion joules of energy at once. That's 200 followed by 45 frickin' zeros. On top of this, the hammer only amplifies Thor's insane immunity to literally everything, is immune to being turned into rock or water by special areas in the afterlife, poisoned, mind-controlled, having his soul stolen, and literally anything that would easily wipe out any other hero. Going so far as to allow Thor and possibly his greatest feat to contain and redirect the energy of the Null Bomb, which was powerful enough to wipe out the entire Milky Way galaxy. But if none of this was very interesting, then I saved an interesting fact for last. Mjolnir is stated to be the guardian of the universe, and is sometimes depicted as having a form of cosmic awareness, allowing it to sense threats and guide Thor, who is the one who is truly able to maximize its power. But the one substance that Mjolnir hasn't been able to fully break is true adamantium, which is the same pure adamantium that was grafted to Wolverine and his claws. With us going over the science behind how Wolverine's claws work in this video. See you in the next one.